in this section we consider numerical optimization the methods are iterative starting from an initial vector x0 these methods produce a series of vectors or x1 to xn that hopefully converge to a local minimizer x star of the objective function under certain mild conditions well these methods usually enforce a descending property so that the cost decreases with increasing index k the update equation that is used is like so xk plus 1 is equal to xk plus alpha and then dk so the new vector is constructed from the preceding one plus an update and in this update you have a step size and a search direction which is usually dependent on the gradient so the methods that we'll be using are gradient methods there are other types of numerical optimization methods such as search methods for instance genetic algorithms the nelder meat method the one that is implemented in f mint search but these methods will not be considered in this course because they go beyond the scope of a 15 hour course in this 15 hour course we will only consider unconstrained optimization problems of this type right so we would like of course to find the global minimizer but in most cases these methods will lead or converge to a local minimizer x star if you have gradient information well then the idea is to find x star that makes the gradient zero right and if you have gradient and hessian information the idea is to find x star that makes the gradient zero and the hessian positive definite we'll see how this is done in this course we will assume that we have access to the gradient and hessian computed analytically so here x is in rn if this is not the case for instance you could obtain the gradient using a finite difference approximation so let us take a, a simple example of two variables f of x1 x2 right if you want to find an approximation of the partial derivative of f with respect to x1 what you can do is well take evaluate f of x1 plus h x2 subtract f of x1 divided by h and for h well sufficiently small this will give you an approximation of the partial derivative and if you do this for the other variable you can compute the gradient using finite differences so you can approximate it using finite differences as mentioned before we will only deal with unconstrained optimization problems but if you want to recycle the ideas of this section for other types of problem you could use the following idea that is only for your information so if you have a problem for instance of the type minimizing f of x subject to h of x smaller or equal to zero what you could do is use a so-called log barrier function that is defined as follows phi of x is minus the log of minus h of x and this is defined right on this domain all x such that h of x is smaller than zero and you can see that when h of x tends to zero then g of x tends to infinity and well this kind of 
makes a barrier that does not allow you to go to h of x larger than zero, right? So instead of tackling this problem, what you can do is minimize, and this then becomes an unconstrained problem, f of x plus mu times this log barrier function phi of x, right? And this is an unconstrained problem. And, well, you will build here using this log barrier function, a barrier that will not allow you to find solutions h of x, h of x larger to zero. But of course, what could still happen is that the well, minimizing argument is such that h of x is equal to zero, so that you have an x that is on, well, the limit or the boundary of the feasible set. So what you will have to do in such a case is that gradually you start decreasing mu to zero. So this is something to remember if you want to implement numerical optimization for constrained problems. Before talking about the different numerical optimization algorithms, let us define the speed of convergence. So assume that we have estimates xk starting from the initial estimate x0 and when iterating we produce these estimates and in the limit when k tends to infinity, well we obtain x star, the local minimizer. We say that this sequence converges to the local minimizer x star with speed of convergence r if the following limit holds. Right? So here we see a limit with k tending to infinity and this is really the asymptotic behavior when k becomes large. So when k becomes large this is the relation that we see and here we see the magnitude of the error and the error is then well the difference with x star and the x we converge to. This is the error at iteration k plus 1 and it is constructed from the error at iteration k and it's c times the error at iteration k to the power r. So what we want is r to be as large as possible and c well, to be as small as possible. Because if the error is small here and we take the power r, with r for instance 2, well what we obtain here is something that is much smaller. Uh, assume that this is 0.1, if we square this we have 0 0.001 and then we multiply by a c that is assumed to be at least smaller than 1. So you see that the error at the next iteration will be even smaller. So we see here r as large as possible and c as small as possible. If r is equal to 1, with c smaller than 1, we speak of linear convergence, right? But you can see that if r is equal to 1 and c is close to 1, well, the speed of convergence will be very slow. If r is equal to 1 and we have a small c, then we have linear convergence. But if in the end, for instance, c tends to 0, well, we'll have a much faster convergence and we speak of super linear convergence. Of course, if we have a, an r here that is 2, then, of course, this will converge faster and we speak of quadratic convergence. So if the speed of convergence is higher, typically fewer iterations are necessary to yield a useful estimate approximation. As mentioned before, the methods that we'll use are iterative descent methods. So at each iteration k, what you have to do is select a search direction d of k, right? And it will be a descent direction. And then you have to 
take a line step alpha k so a step along of course this direction so you start from a point xk right then you look for a search direction and it will be a direction for which this relation holds right and this is imposing that it is a descent direction this is something that we have considered in the previous section if you take dk right is equal to minus the gradient at that point then we have steepest descent right but if you take a dk for which this equation holds well it might not be steepest descent but it's still a descent direction and then you have to take a step size right in such a way that of course if you do this step well the cost function is lower than in xk if you take your step size too large you might end up in a point where the cost is higher right so this has to be determined assume for instance that your direction points in the direction of a valley if you take small steps well you will descend right but if you take steps that are too large you might step over the valley and end up at the other side and the cost will go up right so this descent direction is based on local information in xk if you take the step size too large the cost might increase so you have to take a step size that decreases the cost right when you have the search direction and the step size alpha k you update the parameters in this way and you redo the algorithm okay and different methods will be implemented to obtain the search direction dk right we'll have methods that will for instance be based only on the gradient and some methods to compute the search direction will be based on the gradient and the hessian and there will be different methods for obtaining the step size alpha k an analogy for descent methods is as follows imagine that you're standing on a mountain you find a direction of descent and then you walk in that direction and stop when you stop you make sure that your objective function has decreased and in this case well the objective function would be altitude and then you start the whole process all over again in general the hope that you reach sea level which is the global minimum is slim there is a good chance that you end up at some mountain lake a local minimum line search descent methods are descent methods that are combined with a so-called line search along the search direction so at iteration k you're at the estimate xk and at that estimate what you can do is look for a search direction dk we have seen that a search direction is a direction for which this equation holds and we will see later different methods for obtaining such a search direction well the idea is now different we want to optimize the step length in that search direction so alpha now will result from a minimization problem and if you look at this minimization function the objective function only depends on alpha so it's a minimization with respect to alpha and in step two here you have a one dimensional optimization problem which you can solve in different ways right and the level of approximation in this optimization method gives rise to different methods we'll talk about that later once you have obtained alpha k through this one dimensional optimization well you do the update and you obtain a
new estimate xk plus 1 and the whole procedure starts again. Well, let us illustrate this using a function of two variables. So what I will draw over here are the level curves of a function of two variables. Let's call it f of x1, x2, right? And you have ended up, so this is x2 and this is x1 right so you've ended up in a point over here right and you have found a search direction let us assume that it well, is in this direction over here and well the idea is that you take a step size alpha and that you kind of optimize this step size right if you look at this and you plug in a relation like this one well you will have a one dimensional function that is a function of alpha and it will look something like this alpha and here at this point well you have a certain cost Let's assume that it's this one. And then as you can see, if you take steps, it will decrease, right? And then at some stage, somewhere here, you'll probably arrive at the minimum and then the cost will go up again. Yeah, And you don't know what's happening over here, but it could even go up further, right? And the idea here is to find the optimum for alpha so alpha star that will correspond to the point with optimal cost in this direction over here if you're obtaining the step size alpha k by solving this one dimensional minimization problem exactly you're performing a so-called exact line search right and to obtain alpha k well what you could do is minimize this function analytically right or what you could do is solve it using numerical methods and there are several methods that are available to compute this minimum efficiently an exact line search is done when this one dimensional minimization problem has a low computational cost compared to the cost of computing the search direction itself. If the cost of this minimization problem is high, what you could do is take a fixed but small alpha k, right? and then perform the step and then at the next step well since the cost of computing a new direction is low well you do the whole procedure all over again another alternative is to increase alpha k starting from zero by steps of delta alpha right and then you evaluate the function and when you see that the function starts the objective function starts to increase again you stop and you take the value of alpha k that gave you the smallest cost these different implementations will lead to different approximations of this minimization problem and you could say for instance that this is simply a line search right whereas if you perform this minimization problem exactly for instance analytically or using numerical methods we speak of an exact line search a natural choice for the search direction is of course the negative gradient as is shown over here and the resulting algorithm is called a gradient algorithm or a gradient descent method using 
the standard Euclidean norm, and this is what we are doing here, this corresponds to a steepest descent method. So where is this coming from? We are at a point or a solution, intermediate solution xk, and we want to find a direction such that f of xk plus d is going to decrease right and we want the steepest decrease this function over here so what we can do is use a linear approximation so this will be f of xk and this is the taylor series and the first order approximation plus and here we'll have the gradient transpose times this direction okay and this is valid for d small and here we'll take the euclidean norm of d small right but if you work with this euclidean norm you can write this differently you can write this as the gradient of f of xk scalar product with the direction and we have seen previously in this course that the direction that is going to be such that this is going to decrease the fastest is really the negative gradient direction this can be seen because this is really the magnitude of the gradient in this xk times the magnitude of d and times the cosine of theta so that's the angle between the two and we had seen that if you take theta is equal to pi the cosine is going to be minus one and this therefore corresponds to well the direction of steepest descent the good news is that the gradient descent algorithm converges as long as f is continuous, f is the objective function, and is twice differentiable. We also make the assumption that we use an exact line search. Well, which is less good news is that the convergence is only linear so in our definition of convergence we have r is equal to one and c is smaller than one and this could mean that if c here is well approaching one you can have convergence but slow convergence in practice even if we have linear convergence we can expect problems and these problems have to do with the hessian and the hessian matrix here being ill conditioned and this means that its condition number takes large value so we have seen that the condition number and we have seen this in the course of linear algebra and application is really the ratio of the maximum singular value of this matrix over the smallest singular value of this matrix and we have problems well essentially because when you near the local minimum this linear approximation that we have used this one over here f of xk plus d is f of xk plus well the first order term well is not a good approximation because well this gradient becomes small near the local minimum and the second order term starts to dominate in some cases we'll have problems with convergence the search part will be zigzagging wildly and in the case of ill-conditioned actions we can expect a slow convergence and numerical problems can even prevent convergence in practice as we will see in an example later in the course let us consider a very simple 
quadratic objective function on R square. We have two variables, x1 and x2. Gamma is positive. This means that this is a convex function and well, the optimal point, which is the origin, is therefore also a global minimum. We can compute the Hessian of this function and in this case this Hessian is well, a diagonal matrix right and for a diagonal matrix well the condition number as we have seen it is the maximum singular value over the minimum singular value well that's also the ratio of the maximum eigenvalue over the minimum eigenvalue and here the eigenvalues are one and gamma since we have a diagonal matrix so if gamma let us say is smaller or equal to one right well then the condition number is one right and if gamma is larger than one then the condition number you know, it's one over gamma here and here it will be gamma right so indeed the condition number is the maximum of these two and this is what we have over here and you can see that this condition number can take large values which will ensure a very slow convergence if gamma is either much smaller than one or much larger than one for gamma is equal to one we'll have convergence to the origin in one iteration for a gamma let's say in the interval a third to three the convergence will be rapid but for gamma or well, much smaller than a third but gamma positive will have a very slow convergence or for gamma much larger than three will have also a very slow convergence as we will see in the next example so in this case we have considered the objective function that we have considered previously with gamma is equal to 10 so the condition number of the hessian is equal to gamma here and is equal to 10 so we can expect a slow convergence and indeed this is what we see so here we use this gradient method and the steepest descent method with an exact line search and maybe it is a good idea to have a look at this well convergence path to really understand what is going on so we start from the point gamma uh, which is 10 here one so it is this point over here right and what you see over here are the level curves or the contour levels of this function this objective function well a half x1 square plus gamma x2 square and the idea when we use this gradient method with exact line search is that you will first compute the steepest descent right in this point and as you can see over here we have the steepest descent in a direction that is orthogonal to the tangent to this contour lines this is the direction of steepest ascent and here in blue you have the direction of steepest descent right well if we go in this direction we see that the objective function is decreasing right up to this point over here and if we would continue it would start increasing right so here we do an exact line search and we look for the optimal step size right and this optimal step size leads to this point over here right and here again what we do is look for the direction of steepest descent right and here again this direction of steepest descent given here in blue is 
perpendicular right to the contour line and the direction of steepest ascent is this one over here and here again we perform an exact line search and if you continue to do this well you will converge to the origin but as you can see the convergence is quite slow in this example we take the same objective function with the same gamma and we start from the same initial point x0 that is over here but we use another tactic so we still use the gradient method but we are using now a fixed step size and this step size alpha is small well, rather small point one and as you can see this is then well the convergence part that is taken as this step size is small well, this will be rather time consuming but the path that is taken approaches well a so-called optimal path and this would be the path that would be taken if you drop here a droplet of water it would roll in this valley to the local minimum in this case also the global minimum so in this case we return to a gradient method with an exact line search so steepest descent with an exact line search we still take the same well objective function this quadratic function here with gamma is equal to 10 but we start from another x0 of course we still have linear convergence but since we have started from another x0 we have a different convergence part which seems to be shorter right we still have the problems close to the local minimum here a global minimum due to the fact that the gradient becomes very small but as you can see well it makes sense to take a good initial x0 or perhaps to redo the optimization starting from a different value in any case it is a good idea to change the x0 because if you change the x0 if you have a function that is non-convex well you might end up in a different local minimum well the gradient descent method or the steepest descent method can also be used to find a minimizer for a non quadratic function as is shown in this example over here here again we use this steepest descent with an exact line search let us apply gradient descent in this case steepest descent for a function with two local minima it's a function again of two variables and it's constructed in such a way that you have a local minimum close to one one and another one that is close to five one and to be precise here you have a global minimum close to 1.021 and you have a local minimum close to 4.711 right so what we use is steepest descent with an exact line search and we start it at the points 3.25.3 and 3.53 and you can see that well depending on where you start you end up in the global minimum or you end up in the local minimum so if you use numerical optimization you should start the procedure at different starting points and if you do this well you can hope to end up in the global minimum and you should do this whatever the numerical optimization method or if it uses steepest descent or a direction that corresponds to the direction that we'll consider next one that is based on the gradient and the hash in this subsection we'll present a new search direction that is linked to newton's method
in the previous subsection we had used a local first order model of the function f of x here we'll use a local quadratic model of f of x so we'll approximate f of x by this function over here and really this is a Taylor expansion but a second order Taylor expansion and we have already introduced this at the beginning of the course in the introductory uh, course or in the introduction section if this matrix here is positive definite right well this quadratic function will have a solution and we can obtaining by computing the gradient of this local quadratic model and by setting the gradient to zero right so the gradient of this local quadratic mod model is given over here this one will not contribute because it's constant this one here if you take the gradient will simply give you the gradient of the initial function right and then we have to take the gradient of this term over here and this will result in this second term that involves the hessian and this we have to set to zero so this equation we can rewrite it as follows so the hessian evaluated in xk times x is equal to we'll take this one to the other side it's again multiplied by the hessian and this one we take to the other side as well so we'll have here minus the gradient evaluated in xk so what we'll do now is pre-multiply by the inverse of the hessian so we have that x is equal to xk right minus the inverse of the hessian evaluated in xk times the gradient right so this is the minimizer here uh, x is equal to xk plus one and this you can see as a descent method with alpha is equal to one and with a search direction that is minus the inverse of the hessian evaluated in xk of which you take the inverse times the gradient evaluated in x k okay. in this course we will consider two descent directions the first one that we had considered is really descent direction which is opposite to the gradient and this leads to steepest descent and this other descent direction that involves the gradient and the hessian so it is minus the gradient and you correct for the hessian by inverting the hessian and pre-multiplying the gradient and this is called newton's method so this is the direction associated to newton's method and as i said it can be seen as steepest descent with a scaling that is really inverting the effects of a potentially ill-conditioned hessian and as we have seen this method if the function is quadratic should converge in one step if the function is nearly quadratic well the intuition suggests that taking xk plus dk should be a good estimate of the minimizer of f of x if the function is twice differentiable the quadratic model of f of x that we have used to derive this new search direction will become more and more accurate when x is getting closer to the local minimizer x star this means that this quantity over here will become a better and better estimate of the minimizer of f of x
Again, we would like to say something about the speed of convergence using this Newton's method with this new search direction. And for this, we need the notion of Lipschitz continuity. So a function is Lipschitz continuous with a constant k that is positive if for all x and y in Rn, so f is a function of a vector in Rn here, if for all x, y in Rn, well, the magnitude of f of x minus f of y is smaller or equal than k times the magnitude of x minus y. So, if you divide by this quantity over here, on the left side, you will have something that is close to the magnitude of the slope, at least if x and y are close to one another. And you can see that this well, slope has to be bounded by a constant k. To explain the intuition behind Lipschitz continuity, I will use an animation that is drawn from Wikipedia. So a function is Lipschitz continuous, right? If there exists a double cone, and that's the cone that you see in white, whose origin can be moved along the graph, and this is what you're seeing in the animation, so that the whole graph stays outside the cone. And of course, this constant k that comes from the definition has to do with the opening of this double cone. So now we can say something about the convergence, the speed of convergence of Newton's method. So we assume that we're given an objective function f of x and that x star here is a local minimizer. And the assumptions that we make about f is that it is twice continuously differentiable and that the function is Lipschitz continuous with some constant k that is positive and we have just spoken about this notion of Lipschitz continuity. Since x star is a local minimizer, well the gradient is zero in x star and the Hessian is positive definite in x star. Well then, if you're close enough to the local minimizer, Okay, this says that the magnitude of x star minus x zero is smaller than a given delta. Well, then Newton's descent method with a fixed step here in general will take well, the step size well, close to one, generally a little bit smaller than one. Well, this Newton's method will converge quadratically to x star. Right. So what could happen, even if, of course, the Hessian is positive definite at the local minimizer, well, that it is not positive definite in x0 if x0 is too far from x star. And it could actually be the case for well, some of the other vectors, x1, x2, and so on. So we have to do something about this. Well, before we continue, let us make a little summary. And this is something that you should know at the time of the exam. We have considered two methods, two main methods. We'll call them steepest descent, right? And the other one is Newton's method. For the first method, we have used a descent direction, dk, that is well, minus the gradient right, of f evaluated in xk, and the convergence is linear, right, linear convergence, and here we assume an exact 
line search right the other descent direction that is for Newton's method is to take into account the Hessian so it will be minus well the inverse of the Hessian evaluated in XK times the gradient evaluated also in XK and the convergence is quadratic right and here we have a fixed alpha that is in general in the neighborhood of one slightly smaller than one for both cases the convergence is subject to mild conditions as you can see Newton's method converges quadratically but of course you need access to the Hessian which might be problematic in some cases because it is computationally intensive it could be that for some iterates xk especially when you start the numerical optimization well this matrix here this Hessian is not positive definite so what we'll do instead of working with the Hessian is to work with this modification over here and we'll work with the inverse of this matrix which we'll call B right so this will lead to a modification on the search direction that is used in Newton's method okay because this search direction will depend on this epsilon and this is a levenberg macart search direction the idea is very simple for an iterate xk this hessian is not positive definite so what we'll do is add a diagonal matrix epsilon times an identity matrix to make this matrix positive definite if you choose epsilon large enough right then you can ensure that the eigenvalues of this matrix over here are larger than some value k by construction this new search direction is a descent direction and hence levenberg macart methods are globally convergent we'll use those levenberg macart methods to identify an rmax model in the course of system identification well let us use newton's method on our quadratic function here of two variables with gamma is equal to 10 so this is the same function that we have considered before we'll use a pure Newton's method this means that we use a direction dk that is minus the Hessian inverse times the gradient here evaluated at the same point and we use alpha is equal to 1 and we start from the same point and as you can see we converge in one step because the function is quadratic notice also that the descent direction is no longer perpendicular to the level curve and this is because we take the curvature into account so what we'll do here now is to compare descent methods so the first one is gradient descent steepest descent with an exact line search and newton's method with different step sizes on a function that is well known for testing the performance of optimization algorithms right and this function is called rosenbrock's banana function it is a non-convex function and what we'll do is try to find this global minimum of this banana function and this global minimum lies inside a long narrow 
parabolic shaped flat valley, right? To find the valley is kind of trivial, but then find the global minimum is what well, more difficult. Here is this Rosenbrock's banana function. So if you compare the two algorithms on this banana function, well, the gradient descent, the steepest descent with exact line search will actually diverge due to numerical problems. This is what we have announced. Well, the convergence close to the minimum, uh, if you're in the valley, is problematic and it can lead to problems and in some cases to numerical problems and divergence. This is the case here on this banana function. And then we have tested Newton's method. It is convergence and we have taken different step sizes. Alpha is equal to 1, alpha is equal to 0.99 and alpha is equal to 0.9. So we see here that the number of iterations increase but when we will look more closely we will see that if you decrease alpha slightly you will be following this narrow flat valley very neatly up to the global minimum. So if you use Newton's method, it's sometimes worthwhile to take an alpha that is slightly smaller than one. So what you see here on the screen is a contour plot of Rosenbrock's banana function. And here you can recognize this parabolic shaped narrow flat valley and the global minimum in one one here newton's method with alpha is equal to one and this is also sometimes called a pure newton's method is applied to rosenbrock's banana function so what you can see over here are the level curves of the function and the convergence path to the global optimum one one and as you can see well, the convergence is fast in five iterations, but there is, as you can see here, an excursion from this valley. In this case, this is not problematic, but when you apply a pure Newton's method to some functions, this might lead to problems. In this slide, you see the application of Newton's method, but with alpha slightly smaller than one, so 0.99, and we apply it on the same function, the banana function, and we start from the same initial value, minus 0.82, and you can see here that the convergence takes a little bit longer, 14 iterates, but that you kind of follow this valley over here and what you see over here is kind of a zoom of what you see here on the left in a region that is more or less this one over here so you can see here that you follow the valley although you sometimes have a little excursion here you see the application of Newton's method for a step that is even smaller, so alpha is equal to 0.9. You can see the same situation as before, so the contour lines with the zoom, and here we have the convergence part to the global minimum. And as you can see now, this convergence part is neatly following this narrow parabolic shaped flat valley right of course this is at the expense of more iterations as here the number of iterations is 24 but if you use newton's method it's probably a good idea to experiment a little bit with the alpha and to test values of alpha that are smaller than one and one is really a pure newton's method what we do next is implement Newton's method in MATLAB. The code that you see and other code is available on the web page of the course. In this code, you will see that the gradient and Hessian are obtained 
using symbolic computation in practice sometimes you have to obtain the gradient and the hessian using finite difference approximations but we do not have the time to discuss this in a 15 hour course nevertheless the code can easily be adapted to obtain the gradient and hessian using this finite difference approximations the code that is given here is for pedagogical use only as it can be improved in many ways the idea is that you understand how this newton's method is working and how you can implement it in practice let us start with something that you probably know in matlab you can work with symbolic variables so the first thing that you have to do is define this symbolic variables and this you do with the command sims and then you can define a function of this symbolic variables once the function is defined you can easily compute the gradient and the hash in this code we do something similar but we introduce the function as a string because this is much easier as a user right and we also introduce the variables in a vector of strings okay so this is the function and the variables are x1 x2 of course then we would like to use the symbolic toolbox in the background so what we're doing over here is create a string right which will be if you go through this code sims and then space x1 space x2 right and then what is done is to evaluate this string and by doing so you have created two symbolic variables x1 and x2 and then what well, you have to evaluate this string over here to create the function and after this bit of code you're at the same stage as in the previous line the symbolic variables x1 and x2 are known the function is known so you can compute the gradient and the hessian so let us have a look at this function over here the input here is a string that will define the function so for instance x1 square plus x2 square right this is here well the variables in a vector so you'll have something like this x1 x2 right and here you have the point where you want to evaluate the function the gradient and the hessian so in this case this will be a vector of two variables so for instance one two so the idea here of this function is that it will take this function of these variables evaluate the function in this point compute the gradient evaluate it in this point and then compute the hessian and evaluate it in this point so what you see here in this top part is something that looks a lot like what we've seen in the previous slide so we have to take this function and define the variables symbolically so here again this is what is done if you evaluate this string you have defined x1 and x2 as symbolic variables then you have to well evaluate this string here to compute f of s right and then you have to compute the gradient and the hessian and what is done over here is to assign to the variable the first variable well, what is in the first element of the vector over here and in the second for the second variable you assign a variable that is the second component of this vector over here right this will set x1 to 1 and x2 to 2 right and then what you do is substitute these values in the function the gradient and the hessian and like so you obtain the function gradient and hessian evaluated at this particular point
here is the code to implement Newton's descent method. Of course, you can think of something very similar to implement a steepest descent algorithm. It is the algorithm in its simplest form. You can, for instance, add improvements to implement levenberg mockart or improve on the stopping criterion, which is solely based on a maximum number of iterations. You can think of stopping criteria based on the absolute or relative improvement of the cost function. Let us have a look at the function descent Newton in more detail. It has, well, five inputs. The first three inputs are as defined before the function is introduced as a string the variables are introduced as a vector of strings right and here you have the initial value it's a vector with a number of components that corresponds to the number of variables and then you have here two input parameters that are optional the maximum number of iterations and alpha the step size if these variables are not defined well this function will set for instance the number of iterations and the maximum number of iterations to 100 and the step size to 1. well let us then have a look at the actual code that you have here the first thing that is done is that x is initialized at x0 the initial value and the initial value is also written in a vector here or a matrix right that will keep track of the convergence path so here you can see the for loop that implements the iteration k is ranging from 1 to the maximum number of iterations and the first thing that is done in this loop is to compute the function the gradient and the hessian evaluated in x so the first time this is run x will be x0 but then it will be x1 x2 and so on once you have the gradient and the hessian you can compute the descent direction using the notations of the course you have dk is minus the hessian evaluate that at the iterate xk inverse times the gradient evaluated also in xk right so here in the code this will be h and this will be g so it will be minus h inverse g but we have seen in the course of linear algebra that you can implement this efficiently in matlab using this command once you have the descent direction well you should implement the update equation so xk plus one is equal to xk plus alpha the step size times dk and then at the end of an iteration you have the new iterate and the whole thing starts again until you stop because you have reached the maximum number of iterations right so when this is done you receive a message that you have stopped after a number of iterations that corresponds to what you have entered as an argument over here and as you can see the function returns x so the iterate that you have reached after this number of iterations the function evaluated at this x and the matrix that contains the convergence path so this is how you use the function descent newton here are the arguments and they are defined over here the maximum number of iterations the step size the function that we'll use is rosenbrock's banana function it's a function of two variables and notice that the function and the variables are introduced using strings right and here you have the initial point you start the numerical optimization from here's the code and in this matrix over here you'll collect all the 
iterates that have been covered, right? So this will yield the convergence path. This convergence path is also saved in a file under ASCII format, and it's this file that is used to generate the slides. You've seen that in the slides you have the contour plots, right? This is generated using ticks, and above the contour plots, well, we have plotted the convergence path. So here's the code, and if you run it in MATLAB, this is what you obtain. Well, here you see what is obtained as a convergence path. This is what is stored in the data file. And as you can see in this case here, where we apply Newton's method with alpha is equal to 0.9, we can see that we have roughly converged after 24 iterations. Here again an example in Python in the Jupyter Lab environment of the Anaconda environment. The Jupyter Lab file is available on the web page of the course. So over here the Rosenbrock banana function is defined and here you have even access to a three-dimensional plot and you can recognize this parabolic narrow valley and the optimum is located somewhere here. So here the gradient and the Hessian are computed upfront using these two functions and you can evaluate the gradient and the Hessian in a point x, y. So here you have the function to implement Newton's method with the well, more or less the same arguments as the function in MATLAB. Here the number of iterations and here the step that you take and here you can recognize this iteration. Here you have the descent direction and here the update of the parameters. And again, you can plot the different iterates in a contour plot.